good evening <laughs> and welcome to Katie's Arms live here on Instagram. Um, for anybody who's unaware, which may be a number of you, uh, Katie's Arms live. People join this and they go, what is she doing? Is she just, is she literally just sitting there ranting? And that's exactly what this is. So Katie's Arms is a pub. Um, my drink of choice is always this, Barefoot Merlot, because it's cheap, like me, and easy. <laughs> and my husband's appalled that this is what I like, but I love it. Other people join me drinking this, which is great. People have wandered up to me in places and given me one of these, which is also great. And the pub started during lockdown because we were all so pissed off, and I was pissed off with people being pissed off. And I wanted people to feel better, mostly by laughing at me. So this is the pub, the online pub of the Katie's Arms. And the idea is that you can just laugh. You can sit back, put this on in the background and it can be like being amongst your bonkers aunt. Or, uh, you know, you, you just can just listen to me drivel on. This is literally all it is. It's as shit as that. <laughs> but we kind of, look, we kind of love it, us lot. And if you're one, of, should I put the bottle down now? But if you're one of the outsiders who doesn't love it, um, then what we say to you is uh, offerty piss. Because frankly, we don't give a shit if you don't like this. Because it keeps us happy. And if it keeps us happy, then we should we must do it. Um, <laughs> other people say, what, why does she keep banging on and she's just dribbling on? Yes, that's also true. That's exactly how this works. And then I should also warn you that I overshare. Uh, I don't have any filter. And I overly discuss elements of my personal and private life that might be too much for some of you if, for example, you were trying to eat. Um, the wine is called Barefoot, people are asking. And it's their Merlot. Look, this one's actually quite chilly because it just came in for the garage because I realised in a moment of crises that we might have to do the Katie's Arms without it. So it's because I think red wine's supposed to be warm, isn't it? Or something. Um, and then you may also notice, look, let me show you. My daughter and I were playing dress up. So I now have these. I could be, I could, I ought to audition for RuPaul, really. So um, I've realised the snag of having these put on is that um, my eyelids are really heavy. But also when I put my glasses on, comme ça, the eyelashes sort of, I think they almost touch the inside of the glasses frame. <laughs> so that's that. But because my daughter had them on the other day, her ones, and her eyes look brilliant. I was like, I must have those immediately. But I think what I was actually trying to do was just kind of, you know, claw back some of her youth. Because this is the issue you never know when you're having babies. If any of you are young, um, when you have children, what happens is they grow up. I know, not rocket science. <laughs> Katie's arms, we take it fairly easy. <laughs> and then they grow up and then they become young at the same time as you become older. And no one really talks about that. No one ever looks at this woman going, oh, look at my baby, oh, da, 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 and goes, shit me, love, you know what's gonna happen? She's gonna turn into a hotty hotty boom boom at the same time as you turn into a wrinkly old prune. Hmm? That's what happens. And then you can be walking down the street with like one of your own children and you'll see guys go, and, I, and you wanna just go, piss off mate i'm literally her mother and i'm literally stood here and you're looking at that's my small person that happens the other thing i was just saying to my daughter about um hello from essex hello my love um the other thing about getting old and no one really talking about that is this is the shit that happens when you're old that people pretend that it doesn't but it absolutely does so this morning before i went running I put on my little tiny bra top thing because my boobs, as we know, are tiny. And then I was working out. <laughs> this is a genuine thing that happened. So I was working out that if I pulled it up here a bit, effectively lifting all of this, then all of this went up as well. And then what went through my mind was, well, if I got a really small one, I just wore it a lot higher, I could actually, and then I started trying this, getting my skin from here, and tucking it, has anyone else done this? Uh, tucking my skin under my top to try and pull it all up to see if it would all pull up. That's, so I'm 46 and I am tucking my own skin 
under my bra top, considering buying a smaller one because it would lift everything up. That happens. How does that happen? And, and why? Why can't your skin just stay up? What I need is some big freaking bits of... Should we try this? I know you can buy these, can't you? The sellotape things. I wonder if regular sellotape would work too. Because that's what I might... My husband's sellotape is just over there. I'm really tempted to go and try and get it. Just try. So what we might do next week then, I might buy some of that sellotape stuff and try sellotaping things and see what happens. Because they do say it's quite effective and they say some women wear a big bit of tape around the back of their neck here. Oh, a staple gun. You see, that's why this group's so helpful because that is an excellent idea. I'm just looking around to see what, item, what items I have. So, yeah, so they say some women, you, you see looking really good on the red carpet and things, they have a massive bit of tape holding that up. So I reckon we should do it. I am really tempted by the sellotape things. People are saying sellotape your face. I know, I'm really tempted. What we might do is we'll get it ready for next week and then we'll try taping things up and see how ridiculous we can. I'll end up looking like, what's that guy called that just changed into a girl? Someone will help me. Um, what's he called? The one that was addicted to plastic surgery and now he's, is it Elva? Don't know. Now he's a woman with massive norks. Anyone know? Oh, Gorilla Glue. Oh, ooh, that's a great... Oh, someone just said they missed the creeping Christmas tree. Do not be afeared. One moment. One moment, please, caller. Look. <laughs> it's still here. I just saw the other day. You know how when you put your Christmas decks away and then you go around later around the house and then you see like one frickin' bauble hanging up or like on the back door, back of my bedroom door, there's still my stocking not my stocking stocking, my Christmas stocking. And I was like, balls. And then I was sat here the other day and I was like, oh shit, this too, look. Even more creepy in January. I don't know if anyone, any of you saw that bloody, what's that show called where they mare ship, men ship? Repair shop. Oh, I know. Everybody's father loves it. I saw a moment of that and they were repairing a clown and it was the scariest freaking clown on the planet that you kind of made swing and the woman's like I love it so much it reminds me of my uncle <laughs> it was given to be my, my uncle <laughs> and my uncle gave it to me to play with I was an only child so I love my uncle very much <laughs> and I'm watching the repair shop like oh my freaking god <laughs> just gonna say your uncle sounds a bit like he might be a paedophile mm. I probably don't take the same things from the repair shop as older people do, probably. So friends, there's some things we need to talk about. Number one is the NHS 100,000. And I have many, 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 many emails from NHS 100,000 um, workers. And that's what I wanted to do first this week was say a big cheers. So please lift your glasses if you're at home. Uh, a big thank you to NHS 100,000. And you can find them on places like Twitter, kind of ball bag of a site that that is. But anyway, they're on the NHS 100, and then uh, it's hashtag NHS 100. They're on Insta. Just please support them. I don't care what you believe in, um, but please support ordinary people just trying their best. That's what that is. Um, but I wanted to say to you all, thank you. These are basically 100,000 NHS staff who are holding the line and refusing to get the state injectable. And again, it doesn't matter if you love um, the state injectable, that's marvellous if you've had 15 and an extra booster and you know you want to go and you know blow the man from Pfizer, that's marvellous for you. I'm sure you're still able to find it in your heart to support the fact that not everybody wanted to do what you did and should be able to keep their job and make a choice about what the hell you get injected into your arm, shouldn't you? So that's the 100,000. And what's so amazing about them is that this is basically coercion. Coercion has been illegal in the UK for very, very many years. And yet these people are being coerced into having something shoved into their bodies that they don't want. You know, can't say that hasn't happened to me in the past in other areas. <laughs> Not appropriate. Um, people are being shoved into having stuff shoved. In fact, once in Indonesia, a man put his finger up my vagina as I got into the back of his minibus. That's a true story. And I never spoke about it. I wrote about it in Rude, I think, but I never spoke about it because it was so awful. 
And it wasn't until afterwards I realised how disgusting that was. It actually, actually did. I actually got in the back of his minibus and he shoved his digits up my vagina. I was wearing a small dress. It probably wasn't the best idea and I probably bent over too much when I was getting in his minibus. But still, that doesn't really... Ooh, uh, give someone permission to stick their fingers up your vagina without asking, does it? I'm one of the 100,000. Am I Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. People think I am because of certain features I have, and I'm saying that it, not in a racist way. Um, I also feel a bit Jewish because Israel calls to me when I get there. I get all excitable. <laughs> um, who doesn't love a falafel? But we were talking about my vagina and the fact that it was, yes, but actually we were talking about the NHS 100,000. And I love them all um, because they are saying, no, we won't do that. And what an amazing thing. And the beauty of the 100,000 is that they are many more than the 100,000. So 100,000 is a figure that is notionally being put out there. I have a sense it's way, way more than that, but the media doesn't want to say. Um, I think it's, I would say it might be closer to 200,000. I'm excited. And what I know for certain is that if everybody in the 100,000 sticks together, they will win because the government can't lose them all. It, it will push the government to a place that it cannot get back from. And that's what's so terrific. It's this is a moment of being united, you're stronger. And they will try and pick people off. They will try and take this group or this group or this tranche. But actually, the more people stand together, which is why the 100,000 is such an amazing figure and people know the NHS is in trouble and they know it hasn't got enough staff. So how would you possibly lay these people off? And already nobody can be dispatched to a care home because they were laid off and there's nowhere for these people to go that are now blocking up the hospital wards. It's an amazing thing. I just wanted to share a couple of these with you. Um, we've had the generic email about the vaccine that urges us to get it. I'm a support worker. I'm extremely nervous. My mental health is suffering immensely. Weirdly enough, I was asked to cover at a different site for a colleague who was off with COVID and this person was double jabbed. So why do I need a mandate for a vaccine that clearly doesn't work? Exactly. I won't say names and I, won't, I don't give personal details ever and I never break confidence. I'm a nurse at a private hospital. Last month, this hospital had made, sorry, made nine million pounds in one single month as most patients are going private as the NHS won't do anything for them. Most NHS consultants are also doing private clinics because they also get paid by the NHS at the same time. Our hospitals are quiet with no COVID patients, not a single one. I will be fired on the 1st of April. You know, this is a lovely lady. This one breaks my heart, but so again, being told that she has to have it or she lose her job. I'm really worried. I have a mortgage and three children and I don't want to be pressurised into this. The risks outweigh the benefits of the injection. I come face to face with 70 plus patients daily and it's safe to say I'm fine up to this point in my life. My children and my husband won't have the injection either. And so it goes on. I think sometimes the harder ones Oh, there we go. I'm going to be fired in April. I started my master's degree today. Good on you, girl. You bloody do that. And you're not going to be fired in April. Some asshole is going to take something for you. But what you're going to do is know who you are, know what you believe in, and don't let anybody else tell you who you are. It's why I always got fired from everything. Because I didn't let some small prick tell me what I couldn't say. And so you have to be fired every single time. But that doesn't make you bad and it doesn't make you wrong. It makes what's happened to you wrong. And you'll know, right, where's my posties? Hold on, I need a post-it note immediately. Right, I'm still here. Don't be, don't be afraid. <laughs> don't, never be afraid. Never be afraid when Hopkins is here because I have you. I do, actually. I'd love to be near all of you when something bad happens to you because then I'll kick off. It's really fun when it happens to other people and I'm around. <laughs> Airport queues, checkouts, all sorts of places. <laughs> I rock up <laughs> and then people look scared. Right, hold on. Remember this. So thank you all as well for those letters. Please don't think I don't care. I read them all very carefully and I use them to help inform what I do. Um, I've told the NHS 100,000 gang that anything I can do for them, I will gladly do. Um, and and I, I just can reassure you that because you stand together, you're stronger. And actually, 
because of what you're doing, you make many, many other people out there feel so much better because they see your bravery and your courage and it makes them feel more courageous themselves. So, so please know that whilst what's happening to you is terrible, you are also helping shine a light for other people and that's an amazing thing to do. I know it doesn't pay your mortgage. <clears throat> I totally understand that. It's upsetting, isn't it? Um, and I also feel for, there's people here writing to me and who's, maybe you're one of them, um, that who's maybe their husband or their parents sort of say, well, just get it. Why wouldn't you just get it? You know, and I totally understand that as well. And that's got to be a lot harder um, because one of the things that's happened always in my life, um, when the shit hits the fan, I ring my husband, lovely Mark, and he tells me it will be okay. And often at that point, we don't know if it will. <laughs> There's been plenty of times where it didn't look very okay at all. And indeed, many times where it hasn't really been okay in the sense that we've lost a home or we've lost, you know, we've had social services here or whatever, or I've been um, arrested. Um, but the point is, it is actually always okay because you're still here, you're still alive. And none of the things that they're going to do to you actually matter that much. So so I do know what it's like to have someone at home that says it's going to be OK. And if that isn't your partner or your family, um, there is us out here at Katie's Arms. Uh, my mum's 83 and refuses to get the vaccine. You see, that's the spirit, isn't it? I love it. I also love the fact that eight people live that are 83 years old. I also think, and I often say it to people, I mean, you know, they come to my events in America, they're like 92, and they look like, mm -mm -mm. and I'm like, oh, A, you're amazing. B, you're the senior person in the room. So we always salute the senior person in the room. And then C, you know, they just bloody live that long. I have no intention of living that long, as we know. I'm out by 50, hopefully. Um... So what you have to do, and this was the post-it note thing, thumbs up for Katie Hopkins for Prime Minister, thank you. Uh, I'm not enough of a prick, as it happens, to be a politician. As much as I um, think I would do three things tomorrow that would put the country in order, I, I see that to be a politician you have to be an absolute bastard. And whilst I'm known for being a twat and a cow, I'm not actually a bastard, I just care. Uh, and I wouldn't be prepared to, I mean, I, you know, blown people for things in the past don't get me wrong but I wouldn't be prepared to do that I don't think anymore <laughs> not unless they were devilishly attractive so what you have to do there is a point coming to these post-its apart from just do you think I could do you think I could hold my skin back with a post-it note maybe hold on does that look any better no I just I've started speaking weird <laughs> <laughs> that would be tragic, wouldn't it? Because as you sweat, the post-it note would come off. <laughs> you know that when you look at your phone, up, you like you're trying to do something on your phone, and then it turns around and you get a picture of your own face from underneath. <laughs> it's like shit, me. Who's that with all the chins? And then you're like shit, me. That's me. <laughs> Bloody hate that. Bloody hate that. I do. Um, so yes, yeah, should we get to the point about the post-its before we get on the nipples? Well, I'm trying. Where are they these days? There, there. I don't know. There's so much padding in this bra. I can't even. I haven't got a clue. I wouldn't be able to tell you. I can't tell what's padding, and what's boob. Honestly, I can't. Let's just stick it on there. There we go. Boris out. Katie in. Darlings, darlings. I would. You know, I would. And I think that would. You know, number ten. How much fun would it be if there was like right, there's going to be an announcement by the prime minister. And then they cut to number 10 and then I waft out the door. <laughs> Clasping a glass of red wine saying, darlings, here's how it's going to be. Anybody who doesn't belong in this country can fuck off. All of the NHS get more, more cash and nobody gets fired. What else would we do immediately? We'd get rid of all the freaking cycle lanes and we'd fuck off Sadiq Khan. That'd be immediate. We'd have many more lanes of everything and get rid of all of these putrid cyclists. We'd get rid of the BBC, that's for certain. First day, first day we're getting rid of the BBC and we get rid of most of the other shit bags. In fact, you know what we actually should do? We'll just run it as a dictatorship where it's just me making up the rules and fire all the rest of the fuckers. Perfect. Hmm. 
well, there's many other things I would do. I'd get rid of parent and child parking spaces at supermarkets. I've got to keep doing this, otherwise I'm going to forget to talk about the post-its. Because no bastard needs a parent and child spot at a supermarket. And I don't care if you say, ah, oh, I need to open my car door wider because I have to get the baby thing out. I don't give a shit. Park farther away and you'll be able to get your child out. If you're worried about child safety, you'd park in the safe bit of the car park, not the bit that's really busy near the door. So I'd get rid of those immediately. I'd get rid of, what else would I get rid of? I've got so many things, darlings. Get rid of the unions, probably, because they get on my tits. I'd get rid of sort of automated checkouts. Listen, I don't want to be served by a machine. I'm a human being. I like to go and see, you know, Harvey or Abigail and have chit chats about their day and talk about mine while I'm buying my peanuts or my, you know, chicken sandwich. I don't want to... I don't want to be served by something that I have to... I don't want to do checkout. I've done checkout all of my life. I don't want to do it now. I'm 46. I've got shit to do. You know, I'd make public toilets free everywhere and I'd make them delightful. I'd play music in them and make them a great place to hang out. So many things, darlings. Right. So, uh, say hello to South Africa, my darlings. You know I love you. Um, The post-it note point was, when someone is unkind to you or says something to you or is hurtful or actually sometimes when something it's this is tricky but very often it can be friends isn't it that say things that are un, unkind oh my post-it notes are dropping off it must be the sweat from my i think my nipples are sweating look at the curl on that one see um you're my idol please reply hello hello i don't reply to direct messages because i don't really understand that shit and honestly instagram uttered fucktards so um you always know my email it's katie at katiehopkins.co.uk right whilst my nipples are sweating so if people are unkind like friends will say oh are you okay mm-hmm. are you okay they don't mean mm-hmm. are you okay right so get that very clear when a female says to you mm, are you okay they mean tell me your shit so i can gossip about it later right it's very much like fat women from HR with poor highlights. Um, they want you, oh yeah, tell me how you feel, yeah, yeah, what happened, oh right, yeah, yeah. They want the detail because when you're gone, they're going to tell chubby Belinda all about it and work out how to shit on you, shit on your job and get you fired. Never tell HR anything, for God's sake. But also if a friend um, says, mm, are you okay? Just go, yeah, great, thanks. Even if like you're having a quadruple period, you know, you've got an itchy anus, your nipples are on fire and and your husband just left you, right? I'm not saying that those things should happen to you all at once. That'd be a terrible Tuesday right there, wouldn't it? I'm just saying, you go, yes, thank you. Mm, super great. So I have a line, super great. So you go, yeah, I'm super great. And then you turn whoosh, on your heel, you lift, lift all of this. Yeah, tuck the skin under your bra top. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. and you directionally head off. It doesn't matter if you don't know where you're going. It doesn't matter if you have nowhere to go. You just mm, power walk off, get behind that corner, then you let your shit fall apart, right? Don't fill these people up with your shit, number one. Number two, if somebody says, are you okay? Stick that back on them. Let them know that I don't need to talk about this with you right now, thanks. What that means with with you, mm? with you. Got it? Right. You, you're you letting them know you don't need their kind of help, <laughs> which is them gossiping to their mates on their fucking friends. What's that bastard group, group chat group? <laughs> oh, babe, I got you, babe. No, you haven't. You're just joining in in my pain. Go away. You're a grief vulture. Make people own that stuff. If someone puts you down tomorrow, imagine you get one of these and you're slapping it on them, right? You're saying, no, you tit. You own that pain. Oh, God. Mm. thought I stuck it to my false eyelashes there. <gasps> oh, maybe I should. Oh, that could be a whole thing. Um, stick it back on them, right? Don't. Anyway, um, this wasn't a segue or a push, but I did want to let you know. So some of this shit that I'm talking about here, which I actually think is really important, and I've been super touched by people getting in touch to say that help is actually helping. Who knew, right? Someone might actually write a book that does what it says it's going to do. Hold on. Hmm. 
Yes, so thank you for all the comments and the emails about this. I'm very moved by people being so kind. But I wanted to just say, as I promised I would, that the audio book, in fact, I should give this away too. Um, uh, oh, I was going to sign it with my lip gloss then. Um, so let me just, uh, Leslie Lee, L-E-S-Y-A underscore Lee. Uh, if you send me an email, katie at katiehopkins.co.uk, I will send you my audiobook copy. But uh, yes, I will actually try to let you know that um, the audiobook is out. So it's on Audible. I don't know if you've got some free Audible things. I think you can get bits of it for free. I don't know. Find a way of getting it for free. And uh, it's just me reading away. And uh, we had a lot of fun doing this. And the team that helped me at Audio & Co were just amazing. And we had a lot of laughs and tears. And people have said that it's doing the same for them. So um, if it's helpful to you, then that's uh, a brilliant thing. And yes, it's on Audible. Um, and now very kindly, and this is the way our world tends to work, I find, is somehow our universe finds each other. Somebody is now offered, brilliantly, um, to help make this into a hardback. And so it looks like we may be able to get it in store or, or order. You may be able to order it in store at Waterstones or Barnes and Noble, which is going to be hilarious. So then I'm going to need you all. Um, to at the moment it's available on Amazon or Audible if you want the audiobook but when it gets to Waterstones if we manage to sneak this one in I need you all to go into Waterstones and order it it's not not that I want the money or anything I just want to piss the people off at Waterstones <laughs> because it'll be really fun um, and then if for those of you who are coming to Blackpool um, of course we'll do signings and things and I'm trying to find other places I'm going to be in Truro on the 20 2nd of January and you guys there'll be something near you that's happening I know there's one in London there's one in different cities so the kind of freedom march on the 22nd of January I can do some signings I'm sure somewhere I'm doing a little talk I think or speech and um, the important thing about that that I want to clarify is those are not protests in my view and people say well protests don't work uh, oh hold on was that my eyelash no was it wasn't my granny's Christmas tree, it's okay. Um, I don't think they are protests. So my sense from being at the last one in London, and it was a great day, and thank you to everybody who was like, hey, Katie, we had so much fun. Um, I was trying to be like, you know, incognito, just to kind of film it, to show it to the world, to show you guys. And I try and keep myself out of it because it isn't about bloody me. But then everyone was like, I see you. It's this nose, I think. Uh, it gets me in trouble. So then I just gave up with the hat and I was having a lovely time. But they're not protests. They're actually, I think, kind of festivals. And I always found the same at MAGA rallies as well. It's actually just like a festival of great people. It's why people bring their children, because it's a lovely day. Everybody's kind and helpful to each other. There's no like litter or trash or anything. And there's no trouble. It's just a group of people so many of whom are vaccinated as well, who just want the best for each other and for them to have their choices. And actually just coming and being around, even if you stood way, way back and never went near anyone, you'll see it's just lovely people. It feels very how I used to think the country should feel, you know, and I still do. Just you're in your country and your country's your home. And in your home, anybody would help you. And that's what these, that's what these festivals of freedom feel like to me. Um, there does tend to be the odd noob or two who kind of, you know, gets a bit rowdy with the police. But it's always the way there's a lot of adrenaline and stuff. And I've seen a lot of this before. So I think we're nearly there, my, my darlings. Freedom. Well, of course, um, Saturday the 22nd. Yes, I must try and find out where it is in all different places to try and help everybody. Um, but there probably will be one in your area. So if you're able to go, just go just to feel better. Is how Go and have a coffee or a little chat with someone. And you'll have a nice time, um, is how I found them to be. And if you're coming to Truro, then I very much look forward to seeing you there. I'm not sure I'll have the eyelashes, though, because if I get caught in a Cornish breeze, I'll be like that woman on TikTok, you know, the one that goes... <laughs> OK, um, thank you. Missed out on your tickets. Oh, for Blackpool. Dang. We So we added more dates. Um, I do need to find some other theatres that will still have me. I'm wondering if after May, if Blackpool can go well that other people will have courage to invite me back because 
There we go. I'm back. That was my alarm going off. Sorry. I have roast chicken in the oven. <laughs> that was to remind me to get it out. Um, so, yes. So I'm hoping if Blackpool goes well, maybe someone else will have the courage to have me on their stage. Uh, but to everybody who's made that really a sold out event, I'm super grateful and I'm super excited for it because it's the first stage in five years. And um, I think we can all agree it is a kind of madness that all of these boys that run TV shows know that I'm out here but won't come near me. <laughs> Mostly because I'm better than them, to be honest, and funnier and obviously hotter and have better nipples. Just saying. Um, right, my darlings, I will see you um, next week uh, here at Katie's Arms or I'll keep bringing my updates uh, do get in touch, Katie, at katiehopkins.co.uk. Uh, to the lady who I promised the audio book, if you get in touch, I'll faithfully send that to you. And to NHS 100,000, thank you for your courage. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for holding the line at a time when so many others fail to. Uh, you give all of us hope and you make all of us stand just that little bit taller. So cheers to you and I'll see you at the Katie's Arms next week.